Okay, now to explain again where uh, we've left off. As I said before, um, logic allows you to be man duped and manipulated, and you know I've already provided examples of what happens with that due to lack of understanding of logic and science from uh, the Richard Dawkins clips and other things like that, and what happens from collapse here. Now the thing is that that collapse, which I talked about in terms of uh, computers and everything going off, is actually closer and more realistic than we actually uh, than than might, one might to like to anticipate. The current source, uh, the current situation when it comes to non-renewable resources, is the fact that we are actually st uh, steadily declining. According to Infoline.com, which is the global uh, source for uh, resource, uh, the global uh, uh, source for re uh, for resource management. Um, you know, um, apparently in the last 15 years, we have seen a dramatic uh, increase in U.S. dollar per pound of uh, copper, iron, nickel, and aluminum, the four most uh, the four most basic essentials for um, for modern day society. Iron and nickel, of course, uh, uh, um, you know, mixing with carbon to form steel. Um, without copper, you don't have power lines. Without iron and steel, you don't have trucks. You don't have you don't have industrial molds. You don't have mechanical pieces. You don't have the basics for modern uh, for modern industry. You need metal like this in order to be able to do it. Aluminum. Without aluminum, it's substitute. You don't have a metal basis for society. Without it, technology grinds to a halt. There's always a metal component somewhere in there. And here's the problem. We are, like I said, we're running out of resources. Based on best available analyses, within 50 to within 50 to 100 years, we will be out of metals completely. This means as follows. Not only is this a uh, little uh, blurb, to, uh, the, uh, the little blurb which I quoted here, um, again, which was called, uh, uh, where is it here? Uh, do, 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 do. Living in a non-digital world. Not only are we talking about just computers crashing here, we are talking about power supplies crashing because of the fact that, you know, of, of being unable to transport uh, power. We are also talking about uh, techno, uh, when fossil fuels run out as well. If we don't transfer over, we're talking about um, we're talking about uh, you know uh, technology grinding to a halt in general. Without technology, you don't have sewer systems. You don't have uh, systems being able to maintain buildings. You don't have heat. You don't have light on, uh, except for daytime. On top of that, you don't have food being transported to cities. What food is available? You don't have refrigeration, which means that a, a large chunk of it goes bad. Here's the thing. Generally, supermarkets are stocked for one to six hours panic buying. Uh, generally, one week, business as usual, before they have to uh, before they have to uh, put in fresh inventory. Here's the thing: if food actually starts to go out, not only are you going to be dealing with riots. When people are starting for cities which are a long way away from country uh, from country, you might have mobs of people going out of the cities trying in search of food in the country. But what do you think the bulk of the people in the city are going to do? Mass riots when there's lack of food and medicine. You know, uh, large amounts of people in similar areas. You're going to get typhoid. You're going to get cholera. You're going to get dysentery. You're going to get diseases because of the fact that people are living in their own piss and shit. On top of that, you're going to have one other problem. There are a small minority of people in the world, the Jeffrey Dahmers the like, who, when they are caught without food, will resort to cannibalism. And when people figure out that each other is food, they are going to start coming after you. Which means you would better be damn sure that you've got your house boarded up. That you have got, uh, you know, you better make sure that you've got your house boarded up. A good supply of gasoline uh, available if you're, you know, if you don't want to, uh, uh, if you don't want to do something to fight this, um, you know, and a good supply of food because other and, and a way to defend yourself because chances are you will be dealing the, the the whole zombie films which they talk about with George A. Romero. Yes, I know they seem like science fiction, but believe me, zombies they're not they're not they're not as fictional as you might think, and they're not after your brains. They're just simply after you. They're after what you own. They're after you. They're um, they're after your food. They're after your supplies, and they're after your life. And the only times that they're after that, and they're not even dead people or walking, you know, paranormal or anything like that. They're nothing supernatural. They're just simply you and me every day. The capacity of people to kill when we revert back to our animal instincts because society has collapsed. Do you understand what we're dealing with here? Without technology, we're dealing with this. We are also dealing with a five billion. Po uh, we are also dealing with a, co a techno, eco techno ecological crunch, which will kill off 90% of us. Here's another thought: When lack of food and lack of resources are happening, and there's fighting over scarce resources, what do you think people who are starved and in control of the world's nuclear weapons supply are going to do? Can you say World War III? Why do you think all these predictions have come forward? Because of the talk of, lo of lacking in fossil fuels or the lacking in uh, you know in one major resource or another. That's what they were talking about since the 1960s and 70s. We are now actually dealing with this. Um, on the very first of my video points, I pointed out uh, humanity's the, the the cosmocracy blog. Down on the second posting are lists uh, are is listings of, from various different sources, including NASA, 
which all say that we need this to go. NASA, uh, uh, NASA, uh, Gerard K. O'Neill, uh, some other scientists, Stephen Hawking himself and the Space Studies Institute have all been saying that we need to go get off planet and colonize space if, if we want to be able to survive for the next 50,000 years. Here's another thing. If we, put solar panel, if, we do, if we put solar panels in the desert, like some of the eco uh, people are suggesting, just to solve our, our uh, energy problems and just do that, you're worried about one other thing. Deserts, uh, you know, solar panels from there, you know, we're still getting, there's two problems. One of which we're eventually going to run out of silicon because of the fact that it's being used. And the second law of thermodynamics clearly states that, uh, um, that uh, as I said in one of my other videos, that, uh, that in a spontaneous process, the overall entropy of both the system and the surroundings rise. That means both the silicon and the, uh, you know, and the, uh, uh, and the, um, you know, and the, uh, and the overall environment. Here's the thing, though: so, uh, a spontaneous process means non-reversible, which means that it actually takes more energy put back in to get less amount of product back out of the original reactant. Which means that, and this goes for recycling of metals, recycling of uh, a large chunk of plastics, recycle. Well, actually, you know, pla plastics, uh, you know, it varies a little bit depending on the particular organic compound. You can sometimes get at equilibrium. Um, you know, particularly recycling uh, silicates and other, you know, raw metal, uh, you know, raw materials like these, you're having to fight again, you know, putting more and more energy in to get less and less back, which means again, technological gear down and eventually the technological crunch. So even with recycling, we might be able to stave it off by another 10 years, 10, 20 years, max, maybe even another 50. You know, we ba you know, basically expanding the technological ecological crunch from 100 to 150 years. But even then, it would still happen. If we colonize the asteroid belt, there's enough resources there in terms of metals, silicates, carbides, and other basics for, uh, for life and, uh, you know, other basic elements for life and for uh, technology. And uh, we have the technology in terms of biodomes, which are already being worked on, one, uh, new ones being worked on in France right now. Uh, we've got the technology to, uh, you know, to economically, uh, tr uh, you know, do interplanetary space travel in the form of rail guns and other stuff like that, which are still being used on small scale. And if we colonize the asteroid belt, move heavy industry up into space and ship the finished products back to Earth, we can maintain technolog technology uh, and combine that with uh, solar panels and geostationary orbit. We can combine, we can maintain the entire, the, the, the North American standard of living on the entire, uh, brought to the entire population of the planet, all six and a half billion of us, with environmental, with, you know, with, with zero pollution of the earth, or with, you know, with effectively next to zero pollution of the earth, barring, you know, human waste. You know, you know, but basically like, you know, we cut it back by, you know, like zero, by like 99% for the next 50,000 years. And yes, people are going to go like, oh, it's too expensive to move up into space. Compared to what? The techno-ecological crunch and the, 90, and the human and the collateral damage? And here's another thing. It would take about $3 trillion in terms of information, you know, in terms of industrial, uh, you know, expansion, you know, in terms of all the R&D and getting it all in a major scale to even get the first colony on one of these, uh, on one of these asteroids. The current, the current estimated value uh, you know, just in raw resources, is $15 trillion. If you do the math, that means that's a $12 trillion profit to the person who does the investment and gets a first colony on the first asteroid. The, the, yes, the, um, yes, the, yes, the, uh, yes, the amount of uh, money going into this is, is mind-boggling for, you know, for expenditure to do this. Yes, it's expensive. Yes, it's not small. Yes, it may require, you know, casualties along the way, you know, a few. But saving billions in the process, you know, but saving billions in the process and the profits back from it and the, uh, you know, and the, and the benefits coming back from it are astronomical, literally. They are beyond, you know, you know, imagine mind bogging, bog, imagine mind boggling in terms of the concept of the trillions of dollars that you'd have to spend to get these benefits. The trillions upon trillions beyond that would blow your mind. You get the idea? Read the, read the Cosmocracy blog. Read the, uh, re, uh, watch the videos I suggested. Read Tomorrow's Technology and You. Read the references. Watch my other videos. Uh, read the references I posted in the global warming videos and the other stuff like that, the chemistry textbooks. Read the science textbooks. Get yourself a good dose of calculus as well to be able to understand what we're talking about. Get yourself a good dose of the critical thinking fallacies, uh, you know, of understanding critical thinking errors and, uh, you know, how math can be manipulated and the like. And more importantly, learn how to think tangentially and learn how to connect the information that you are getting from your life to everything else in your life. Because chances are, and, and whatever you do, try to avoid compartmentalization. Because compartmentalizing can lead to irrationality in one area, but rationality in another. You know, people who might seem perfectly rational about your day-to-day -day lives are the same type of people who can believe in this sort of stuff like the psychic surgeons and be more than willing to go, uh, um, you get my idea. Toodles.